<laughs> Today we're taking this pond right on out of here and turning it into this. Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Today I'm in Drums, Pennsylvania, and we are taking this existing pond out of here and putting in a brand new one. They've had this pond for about five years, and ever since it was installed, they've had a struggle with keeping it clean. And they're not really happy with the aesthetics of it. Not loving the waterfall there, or the one on this side. So we're gonna remove this entire thing, reshape it. It's gonna be about a 20 by 35, 38 foot long pond. This waterfall is coming out all together. We're gonna be building a constructed wetland over here. We're gonna elevate that and have some nice cascades coming out of there. There'll be jets inside the pond, aeration, and we're gonna have an intake base skimmer going this way with a really cool bridge going over the top of it. They've got a beautifully landscaped backyard here. This is kind of the centerpiece of the backyard. They really wanna be able to enjoy it. I see you there, Drew. And having clear water is imperative. So we're gonna make that happen with our filtration and the way we build the pond, it's gonna look awesome. What do you think, Drew? I'm ready. He couldn't see me. I'm ready. Well, the demolition and dismantling of this pond took most of day one. But we managed to get everything out of this pond. That old waterfall berm is gone. We brought it over there. Actually, this is where the new constructed wetland filter and waterfall is gonna be on that far end of the pond. We filled that dirt in and we actually compacted it with the trench roller. So we got some good compaction there. Now we can start laying this thing out. So when you're thinking about doing like a pond renovation, don't shortchange yourself on the demolition. It's quite a bit of work to get an old pond out, not to mention dealing with all the mucky water and miscellaneous frogs and stuff that get in the pond. It does take quite a bit of time and you can see this one took every bit of six or seven hours to get out of here with five guys. But on the other hand, if you are hiring somebody to build your pond, that is one of the ways that you could save money if you have the means. If you can actually demo and get rid of the old pond, you're gonna save yourself some money, sometimes thousands of dollars if it's a large project. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay an outline here of what the new pond's gonna look like. I'm gonna spray out some areas where it's gonna kinda of bump in. I'm gonna change the whole shape of the pond and we're gonna create a cove area on the backside there where the waterfall is. Then we'll start carving with the machines and we'll make adjustments as we go. So we'll take a little more here, pack in a little bit more there. And that's kind of the art of it. That's where the artistry comes in is creating the shape of the pond. And then of course you got the waterfall that follows that. Welcome to day two. We got some torrential rain last night. And that's not usually best case scenario when you've got an open excavation. We did get some water in the hole. A lot of the dirt that was on top here was super soggy. So what I'm having to do this morning is strip all that mud off and get it off to the side. We can't use it to build with, especially in our berm for the waterfall because it just won't compact. So we've got to go through, get all the bad stuff out and then start shaping out this pond. Fortunately on this project, we're gonna have a bunch of excess soil. So it's not that big of a deal that we're stripping some off and it's gonna be waste. If you're on a project where you need all the soil to build your berms and stuff like that and you get a big rain event, a lot of times the material is there is gonna be kind of garbage unless you're gonna let it sit for a while and dry out. And when you do this for a living, you don't always have that luxury. So 
that might mean getting rid of soil and bringing in new soil which can definitely add to the cost of the project but that's dirt work right when you're out here in the elements you got to deal with whatever mother nature gives you and uh, I think we got some more rains coming this week so it's going to be important that we get this thing dug today get our liner in start rocking so that we do get more of that rain at least things are covered up and it's not going to wreck our job site It's a hot one today. So our excavation for the pond is done. And this is going to be a big water feature. We've got some cutouts here on the side. That is for base material where we're gonna be using that block wall to support those big ledge stones. So we cut that out before we put the liner in. This way when the liner and the fabric go in, we can use gravel inside there to adjust our level to get the base right where we need it to achieve the height necessary to support that rock with the blocks. There's another one on the other side about where Jason is. We've cut shelves down to the bottom in certain areas and then we've created shelves in others. This is where our waterfall is going to be coming in. Our wetland filter, once this gets cut down, will be up in here feeding multiple cascades, coming down and then finally into the pond. Right now Colby's working on getting rid of all that wet soil we cut out of here this morning. That's getting dumped on property in the back in the field. And that's all good dry stuff that we'll be able to use to shape our berm for the waterfall and for any other ancillary landscape areas. Next order of business is to drop in our fabric. This is a heavy duty non-woven poly fabric that goes in first, that's gonna protect our liner, followed by our 45 mil EPDM liner, which is gonna be one whole piece for the pond. We will be doing a seam where the intake is, but we'll get our fabric liner and then some more fabric on top of the liner because we're gonna be setting some big rocks inside here. But finally, there's gonna be some stone going in the hole. Day three here is gonna be a big day for progress. We wanna get a huge amount of the rock work done inside the pond, so that's what we're gonna focus on with everyone today. We're expecting some thunderstorms moving in later on this afternoon, so if we can get 80% of this pond rocked in today, that'll put us in a good spot to actually kind of tighten things up for the weather and then hit tomorrow really hard because by the end of this week, I wanna have this pond pretty much finished and ready to start next week with that waterfall. The fish cave on this end is in. We're starting to frame out with some large boulders. This is the whole bottom sump here. That's the four foot deep section. We're gonna take some of these gaps here and use some smaller rock to kind of make it tight, building in some lights into there, as well as putting some jets down the bottom. We wanna get circulation from the bottom of this pond all the way up to the top which is gonna send it in through the intake. We're looking at a lot of these inside turns and we wanna accentuate that. And we do that by placing large boulders there. Then we'll use some smaller stuff on the outside curves. This way, when it's finished, it really accentuates those lines. If we used all big boulders in here, when it's finished, it would straighten the whole thing out and it would really not achieve what we're after as far as creating that nice shape in the pond.
I was having so much fun building, I stopped and thought to myself, you know what, I gotta tell these fine people what exactly it is we're doing over here. Day three has been a heck of a productive day, let me tell you. All right, over here, Drew got down and he really did his thing with the wall. This is where we're gonna have one of those ledge stones. That's gonna be cantilevered over this wall. This is the structure that's gonna support that stone. We're gonna be ending up with the stone the same height as this paver patio that comes in behind it. So it'll be a nice flush entryway out to here. When you're standing on the stone, you won't see the wall whatsoever. It'll be right clear down to the bottom right here, which is three feet of water. We're gonna flank this on either side with rock work. So it'll be built in and then that other stone will hang over it. So at the end of the day, really the only way you would see this is if you were standing over here looking down on the water and still when it's surrounded by that rock work, it's gonna look fantastic. Drew went ahead and built in one of our lights into the wall in the cup it's got conduit coming out of it so if the fixture ever has to get replaced easy to do without taking this wall apart colby and i have been setting tons i mean tons of boulders in this pond creating all sorts of cool areas we've got a section here that bully's working on now that's going to be a huge aquatic planting zone up behind here so we're putting in these flat framers back behind as a delineation. In front of that, it's gonna be loaded with aquatic plants. Could be a nice live edge, kind of blurring that line from aquatic to terrestrial. Give it a year or two, it's gonna look just amazing there. We've got lots and lots of big boulders. This thing is every bit of a ton and a half, huge rock. Jason got down the bottom here. He finished up the bottom section. I wanted to tie in some of this real nice stonework here along with our boulders and that just looks great. Imagine looking four feet down and seeing that in the bottom and you got that mirrored on this side, same thing. And Jason went ahead and he built one of our lights into the side here, so that looks fantastic. Nice little job there. And we've got a jet down underneath here, which you can't see right now, but trust me, it's there. Jason's getting busy on installing a fish cave over here. He's doing some cutting on the pipe. He's gonna have a rock that stretches from here all the way across it, disguising the fish cave. That thing's surrounded by these gigantic boulders as well. And then we got Drew over on this side. He is... What are you doing? Well, I'm laying the base layer of our block wall here, just like he showed you over there. Building this wall is gonna support that front edge that's gonna cantilever over the water. And then that rock itself is about eight and a half inches thick. So about half of that rock will be in the water. The other half will be stretched back to the edge of that patio. A nice transition and in very inviting to get to the side of the pond. <laughs> <laughs> well, explain to me how exactly this base is going in here. Well, so using our transit, we, uh, we calculated the depth we had to put our base of about six inches of crushed gravel. Then it was compacted, and then we measured our distance of height. For day three, we, we really kicked some serious butt out here. And I see us getting still quite a bit more done today. We've got some sunlight. I know there's gonna be a storm rolling in, so we're gonna get as much done as humanly possible before that happens. Let's get back to work. had to make quick work of battening down the hatches. It is moving in real fast, people. We're all covered up here. We'll see you tomorrow.